this is Peg Rittenauer. I'm Vice President of Legal Services here at the Ohio Association of Realtors. One of my main responsibilities at the Ohio Association of Realtors is answering legal questions on our legal assistance hotline. Uh, an area that's always been popular are questions dealing with handling offers and handling multiple offers. Luckily, with the market picking up, we're receiving more questions in this area. So today what I'd like to do is just to go over some of the basics with respect to your obligations with, with handling offers or even more importantly, handling multiple offers. Um, there are two good resources that give you direction as far as your responsibilities in this area. The first is the license law, which is enforced by the Ohio Division of Real Estate, and the second source is the National Association of Realtors Code of Ethics. Both of these sources, from a legal standpoint and an ethical standpoint, should be your guide with respect to how you handle offers and multiple offers. The main thing that you need to remember in this area is that for most, you have an obligation to present all offers to your client. As the listing agent, your duty to present all offers requires you to present those offers in a timely manner. And what that means is that you have to present those offers as soon as possible given the circumstances. You know, many, many years ago, of course, presenting offers meant that you actually drove across town and took the offer to the seller. But today, with technology, there are a lot of very simple ways to make sure that you comply with this obligation. Um, offers are frequently emailed to sellers. They can be overnighted if you have a seller who's on vacation and doesn't have access to a computer. Um, so you have a lot of different ways, including faxes, of course, as well. Um, so that you, first of all, again, want to get that offer to the seller as soon as possible. The second thing that you want to remember is that you have a duty to present all offers up until the time of closing. Um, you may have a contract on a property that you have listed. Maybe the financing has already been secured by the purchaser, the inspections have been done, and it's pretty likely that that deal is going to close. But unfortunately, we've all had that situation where a deal blows up at the last minute, even at the closing table. And for that reason, it's always to the seller's advantage to have a backup contract in place. Um, with that in mind, that's why you have the duty to present all offers up until the time of closing so that if the seller wants to consider any other offers as a backup offer, a backup contract, they have that opportunity. The final uh, guideline with respect to how you present offers is that all offers have to be presented in an objective manner. Um, in many cases, when you have a multiple offer situation, you as the listing agent may have written one of those offers. The other offers may have been written by cooperating realtors. Um, despite the source of who wrote those offers, all the offers are to be presented um, in an unbiased manner, in an objective manner. Uh, go over the terms with your seller, and certainly the ultimate decision with respect to which offer is accepted or countered lies with the seller. <clears throat> With respect to handling multiple offers, probably the most common question we get is, does the seller have an obligation to let all buyers know that they're in a multiple offer situation, or do you as a listing agent have that obligation? Um, with respect to the seller, clearly there's no law that mandates that a seller notify buyers that there are other competing offers. As far as your obligations as a listing agent, the thing that's important to remember is that you have a duty of confidentiality to that seller. And that duty extends to the fact that the seller has received an offer, um, received more than one offer, or what the terms of those offers may be. Because you have this duty of confidentiality, you should never disclose that you have an offer um, or in a multiple offer situation without the consent of the seller. Now, most sellers will probably want that to be disclosed because they believe that if buyers realize there are other competing purchasers um, that have submitted offers, that it will get them to increase their offer and result in the seller getting the most money for their property. And that's probably very true. But every once in a while, you may have a buyer that is turned off by a multiple offer situation. They may view it as a bidding war. Um, some buyers may not have the stomach for that type of situation. They may have had a bad experience in the past. And we have had instances where buyers who have been notified they were in a multiple offer situation actually revoke their offers, withdraw their offers. Um, that's a, a scenario that you must discuss with your seller so that your seller can make an informed decision, uh, realizing that that's a risk that may occur if you notify all parties that you're in a multiple offer situation. Um, if the seller does decide that they want all parties notified that they're in a multiple offer situation, the Code of Ethics requires you as a realtor to um, notify the parties if you are one of the sources of one of those offers. So, for example, if you wrote an offer and the other two offers were written by cooperating realtors from other firms, you need to notify those other realtors that the seller's instructed you to notify them that there's a multiple offer situation and that you have written one of those offers. Um, 
One of the questions we frequently get on the hotline is dealing with the denial of one of the offers. Let's say you're in a multiple offer situation, um, and one of those offers is obviously accepted. The other ones are rejected. When you notify the parties that their offer has been rejected, sometimes they'll want to see that in writing from the seller. So the question we get on the hotline frequently is, do you as a listing agent have to get that in writing from the seller? Does the seller have an obligation to reject an offer in writing? And the answer is no. There's nothing in the law that requires a seller to reject an offer in writing. The fact that the seller didn't accept it is in fact a rejection of that offer. Um, from a practical standpoint, it's always a good idea for you as the listing agent to try to get your seller to pr put that rejection in writing because that will alleviate the suspicion in the minds of those buyers who lost out on the property that their offer was never accepted. So it's a good way for you to document that you've complied with your legal obligation to present all offers and what the seller's response to that offer was. Those are the main issues that we see on the legal hotline. Certainly there are a lot of different fact patterns that go on out there with respect to offers and multiple offer situations. Um, a good resource for you as a realtor when you have questions this, in this area is our white paper on contracts. It's on our website, which is Ohio Realtors. Dot org, um, and it's under the legal section. Um, I hope that's answered some of the questions you might have about handling offers and counteroffers. And if you have more, I would certainly recommend that you check out that white paper. Thank you.